Do you like to stabilize your FPV footage? Maybe you are a cinematic FPV pilot and stabilized footage is just what your client expects to see. Or maybe you're more of an FPV freestyle pilot and you're a dirty, dirty cheater. Guys like Drib and Bubby and Slat FPV who do freestyle with hyper smooth turned on on their GoPros. Yo, yo, dirty cheaters, how dare. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Do what you want. Whatever the reason that you like stabilization, you may not like having to pay $99 for Real Steady Go, which let's face it is the best stabilization you can get today. You may also not like the fact that you know GoPros have hyper smooth built in, but what if you're not flying with a GoPro? What if you're flying with a DJI and all you have is DVR like you're seeing right here? Or what if you're flying with analog and you have analog DVR? Or what if you're flying with a run cam orange and you want to stabilize it uh, and you can't use real steady go that's what we're looking at today we're looking at a project called gyroflow and it's going to let you do stabilization with any footage that you want because unlike real steady go which requires gopro footage that has gyro data baked in gyroflow uses the black box data from your quad, which also has gyro data. And therefore you can stabilize anything. You can stabilize anything. This is DJI DVR. It, uh, it, Real Steady Go can't do this. That's what we're looking at today. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. Now, the first thing we need to do is download and install Gyroflow, and I will walk you through that. We're going to go to the GitHub releases page, and I will put a link to this and all of the other stuff we're working with in this video down in the video description below the video. Um, we're going to go here to the releases page. 030 is the newest version at the time I'm making this video, and I am on Windows, so I'm going to download the Win64 version. I'm on Windows 10. And we're also going to need to grab this camera presets zip file. There's one more thing you're going to need to make this work, uh, and it's called FFmpeg. FFmpeg is a utility that manipulates video files, and Gyroflow uses it to do the things that it does. On Windows, we can download the binary for FFmpeg from this page. Again, links are in the, all are in the video description if you want to just click on them. Uh, and what we need to get is this file, FFmpeg-git-essentials.7z. Uh, that is a, a zip archive, but it is not the zip format. It's 7z format. So probably you will not be able to open that natively in your operating system. Uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to download 7zip uh, and that will let you extract that copy of FFmpeg. If you're on Mac OS or Linux, I don't know. You got to figure it out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a folder that I have on my hard drive called RC Utilities. And I'm going to make a subfolder there, gyroflow030. Uh, this doesn't have an installer per se. You just put it on your hard drive somewhere. I'm going to drag that executable file, and I'm going to move it over into that folder. I'm going to open up the zip file of the FFmpeg. And in the bin folder, I'm going to grab ffmpeg.exe, and I'm going to drag that over. And here the camera preset zip file that I downloaded from the Gyroflow web page, I'm going to go and I'm going to take the camera presets folder and I'm going to drag that also into my Gyroflow folder. So now I've got a folder on my hard drive with Gyroflow win64.exe, fvmbeg.exe, and camera presets. Now let's take a look at what Gyroflow can do and how to use it. And I'll just go ahead and run the executable file and immediately Windows is going to freak out because it's an unsigned executable and they're like, ah, oh, this could be a virus. Are you sure? So your call, but I'm going to go ahead and run it and we're going to get two windows pop up here. One is this little console window and I'm going to move that off screen for most of this video, but it actually has some useful information about what Gyroflow is doing in the background. For now, we'll just move it off screen though. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the video stabilizer, which is what I think most people are going to want to do. And I'm going to maximize the window. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose the video file that I'm going to be working with. And the simplest thing you can do is you can choose a GoPro video file that has gyro data stored in it. See, the beautiful thing about what Gyroflow and Real Steady Go do is they don't do 
optical image stabilization, like the old like warp stabilizer, if you're familiar with that, uh, a plugin for uh, I think After Effects, or the old Real Steady, which was an After Effects plugin. They did optical image stabilization where they analyzed the image, they looked at how the image was moving, and they tried to like figure out how to stabilize it. Sometimes the results were pretty good, sometimes they were pretty bad. What these modern programs do is they take advantage of the fact that these cameras have gyro chips inside them, just like your flight controller. And they record the movement of the camera as the video is recorded. And then later that data can be used to stabilize the image. And it's much more accurate and much simpler because you don't have to do a whole bunch of complicated and fiddly image processing. So if you've got a file from a GoPro, it has gyro data in it, at least all the modern GoPros. And some third-party cameras also are saving gyro data out We'll take a look at that in just a second. But let's pick this GoPro file here and we'll open. And what you'll see here is that it has automatically selected that the gyro data is inside, it's coming from inside the house. The gyro data is inside the file. Later, we'll look at an example where you can select an alternate file. Like for example, if you have a camera that doesn't record gyro data, like a DVR file, you can use your black box data from your quadcopter. Pretty slick. That lets you stabilize any camera. Let's continue with the GoPro for now though. Gyroflow is also gonna want us to choose a lens preset. And what we can do is we can just start typing here. This is a GoPro. And so we can type GoPro and look at the lens presets that are in here. And unfortunately there isn't one for a Hero 10, which is what I'm using. So I'm just, there is a utility that uh, Gyroflow makes that lets you create your own lens presets where you take a picture of a test pattern and then it analyzes it. We're not gonna be doing that in this video. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the GoPro Hero 9 Black. And the most important thing is that the aspect ratio and resolution be correct. Uh, so this is a Hero 10 and we are, let's choose 5K 16 by nine wide. That is actually the aspect ratio. We're in 4K, not 5K, but uh, that's pretty close. And you'll see down here where it says preset information. It's not like if, if we had chosen the wrong aspect ratio or the wrong resolution, it would give us a warning here, but seems okay here. The next thing we're gonna do is we, uh, we have the option to choose to rotate the video. If the camera was not right side up, you can rotate the video. We don't need to do that. And generally you will not need to ch change any of these options, the gyro log type, the gyro source variant, and so on, um, because generally it will auto detect. But you can see here, we can tell it what type of log file we've got, whether it's a CSV file and whatnot. And then on some of these options, like for example, if I choose a run cam CSV log, you will need to choose a second sub option to tell it like which camera was selected. So basically you like, if I used a run cam five orange, it would be pretty obvious that I would pick run cam here. And it would be pretty obvious that I need to pick run cam five orange here. It's pretty straightforward, but we're going to go back to the automatically selected option here. The camera to gyro angle is used for cases where the gyro, the thing that is recording the gyro data, like your flight controller, has a different up tilt angle than the thing that's recording the video, like your camera. Now, in this case, the GoPro itself is recording both the gyro data and the video, so there is no need for any adjustment to the angle. But if you're stabilizing DVR footage, where you've got a 20 degree up tilt on your camera, but your, your, your flight controller is flat, then you would need to put a gyro camera to gyro angle in here. We'll see that again a little later in the video. And then finally, we've got this low pass filter. Let's talk about that. So once I've loaded the video and the gyro data in, I'm gonna hit plot and analyze gyro data. And it's gonna bring up this screen, which is showing the Fourier transform of the gyro data. And it's showing the movement of the gyro on each of the three axes. And what I want to look for here is I want to look for any high frequency noise, like up above, say, 60 or 80 hertz. It may, there may be cases where we have motor noise. Uh, it's going to be more prevalent if you're using a black box log versus the built-in gyro on the GoPro, because I think the built-in gyro on the GoPro has built-in low-pass filtering. But if we look at these charts and we see a big spike of noise somewhere around 40, 50, 60, 80 hertz, we may want to go in and use a low pass filter. A good value for the low pass filter is about 50 hertz. Anything above 50 hertz probably isn't meaningful information, but we can try 
just using minus one, which disables the low pass filter. Assuming we have clean gyro data, that will give us the best stabilization. For example, if you filter out high pass, if you, if you use a low pass filter, you may limit your ability to filter, to stabilize like jello, right? Where you may only be stabilizing lower frequency, smoother moves and not higher frequency uh, stuff like jello. We're gonna start with a low pass filter of negative one, which means it's disabled. And if we don't like the results, we can put in a number like 40 or 50 Hertz to put a little bit of uh, smoothing on the data. Once that's done, the next thing we do is we go to the sync tab. And the sync tab's purpose is to sync up the gyro and the video data. Well, in this case, that's gonna be really easy to do because the camera recorded the gyro data and the camera recorded the video. So they're automatically synced up. We're still gonna go through the steps, but later in the video, when we look at a separate black box log and separate uh, GoPro, a uh, separate video, we'll see that the sync is a little bit more uh, significant. So I'm just gonna hit attempt auto sync and it should sync perfectly, basically. And we can see over here in the console window, there's some stuff going on. So that's why this is relevant. I mean, the, this, this uh, graphical window just kind of looks like it's sitting there doing nothing, but we can see it working here in the background in the console window. When the auto sync completes over here in this section of the window, you're gonna see some sync points have been added. And uh, what I like to look at is this error. Any of the sync points for which the error is particularly high probably it's not actually a good match. We can get a little bit more information about that by ticking this display sync plots button and hitting apply settings and compute sync. And these plots are showing how closely the program thinks that the gyro data matches the image data, the video data. Uh, this first plot, I don't even know what it's called, but you've got this line and the closer these points are to the line, the better a match the sync is. So we've definitely got a couple of points that didn't very closely match. Uh, and then we've also got this graph, which shows for each of the sync points, how close the movement of the image matched the movement of the gyro on the pitch uh, roll and yaw axis. And most of these don't look that great either, which I gotta be honest is confusing the hell out of me because this is built-in GoPro data. The gyro should perfectly match the video, but let's just proceed and see what kind of a result we get, I guess. The next thing I'm gonna do is zoom out this field of view scale because I want you to be able to see, and I wanna see, what the program is doing. And you can see that with stabilization enabled, the image is being warped. And if we turn stabilization off, we just get the original image. This is something that all stabilization programs do. They have to sort of warp the image and, and zoom in on it and so forth in order to stabilize it. Uh, and normally what they'll do is they'll just zoom in so you don't see that. Uh, and you can do that in this app. But for now, I'm gonna take this field of view all the way out so I can see the program working. And then let's just move this playhead forward a little bit until we get in the air. There we go. That seems good. Let's take a look at what we got. And I think what I'd like to do is look for a place where I can see some roughness and see how well it's been stabilized. So I'm gonna pause this playback. Like up here in the wind, we should get a little bit of roughness, I would think. Yeah, there's some roughness right there, a little bobble. And let's just turn stabilization on and let's zoom on in. Yeah. Now I said at the beginning of this video that Gyroflow is way more than just Real Steady Go for free. And here's one of the things it can do that Real Steady Go doesn't let you do. If we go to the stabilization tab, there are different smoothing methods that we can choose from and that let us tweak exactly how the smoothing is applied. So plain 3D smoothing is the default, but if we want to individually control how much smoothing is applied on the, on the three axes, we can choose yaw pitch roll smoothing. So for example, um, a lot of times smoothing on the yaw axis doesn't look as good. So maybe what we'd like to do is have a lot of roll smoothing and then like not as much yaw smoothing. Sometimes smoothing on the pitch axis doesn't look as good when you pitch back or pitch forward, or maybe you feel like you'd like that to be extra smooth. You can dial those up or down as much as you like. This option, Lock Horizon, uh, will only work if there's an accelerometer on in, in the data. And I know that the GoPro has an accelerometer and can do horizon lock, but when I select this option, 
the program crashes. So we'll have to take a look at this when we're working with Betaflight black box logs because I, I know they can do it. And then these 3D smoothing options with smooth angle limit and with sharp angle limit, those the 3D smoothing with sharp angle limit is a good choice for flippy floppy freestyle to j just take a little bit of the edge off of it. Uh, whereas these other three, plain 3D smoothing, Yaw Patrol, and Mock Horizon are better for cinematics flights where you just are sort of cruising around. Well, okay, let's take a look at how that works if you don't have an expensive GoPro that puts the gyro data in the video file. Uh, let's pick a different video file. Here is the same flight, but this time from my DJI DVR. And we're going to need to pick a new preset. So I'll just type DJI. By the way, if you want to see all the presets, just click this button here and it takes you to your hard drive. You can go into wherever you put your GyroFlow program and there's the camera presets folder and you can see all the presets that they've got. And once again, you can make your own uh, using this app if you want to. Let's type DJI in here. So here we've got profiles for the DJI Air unit. Um, this is technically goggle DVR, but it's probably pretty close. It's the same camera. We'll pick air unit 1080p four by three is the correct aspect ratio. And then we need to pick the correct gyro data. In order to get the gyro data, we need something that will record the gyro data. And thank goodness our flight controller has exactly such a thing, at least as long as your flight controller has black box logging. So if your flight controller doesn't have black box logging, you can get external logging devices, and that's going to be a topic for another video. Uh, but assuming your flight controller has black box on board, you're going to go to the black box tab and you're going to choose either onboard flash or SD card, depending on whether you have a data flash chip or an SD card. Uh, built into your flight controller. A logging rate of 500 hertz is enough. And I set the debug mode to gyro scaled, but I think that GyroFlow only uses the filtered gyro data. Out of force of habit, I set it to gyro scaled just in case you want the pre-filtered gyro data as well. Once you're done doing that, you're going to go do your flight. When you come back, you're going to have a black box logs saved on your uh, on your device. If it's an SD card, just take it out of the flight controller, put it in your SD card reader on your computer and away you go. Uh, if it is a data flash chip and if it's an SD card, you can do this as well. You'll hit activate mass storage device mode and you'll get a removable drive will pop up on your computer. Your flight controller will act like a USB card reader and you can read the file that way. I have had a lot of cases where activate mass storage device mode doesn't work, especially if you've got a data flash chip. In that case, you can use this save flash to file button. Um, technically, it has been, it's unsupported, but it still works for now. And I've had it work in cases where mass storage device mode didn't work. The last thing to point out is if you have a data flash chip, you might think that Betaflight will record basically your last so many flights and just sort of like overwrite the old data. That is not how it works. Once your data flash chill, chip fills up, beta, it no longer records and just stops recording and you have to manually hit erase flash. So once you've got the files off of there, make sure to hit erase flash and clear it so that you've got room for your next flights. When all that's said and done, you will have a black box log with your gyro data in it and we'll hit open gyro log. We'll go to that folder. And here is the black box log that goes with this video file. The process from here is almost the same. Um, here we've got auto detected black box raw file, our gyro source variant. There are no options there. We do need to set the camera to gyro angle based on how much up tilt our camera has. And this is going to be a, a little tricky because like how many degrees of up tilt is that exactly? Is it 15 or 16? You, you don't know. I'm going to, my GoPro is at 20 degrees and I'm going to get basically eyeball that my camera was about the same and put in 20 degrees of up tilt and just cross my fingers and hope that produces good results. Now, just as a sanity check, I am going to hit the plot and analyze gyro data and look. And sure enough, we've got just very, very clean data here. No big noise spikes or anything like that. So it doesn't seem like there's any need to filter this. Although if we certainly could put in a low pass filter, if we wanted, I think this is the post filtering gyro data and it's already being filtered by Betaflight's low pass filters is my theory.
All right, we'll go to the sync tab. And here is a time when you might want to change the initial rough gyro offset. If you start the, if you arm the quad within about 10 seconds of when you start the recording, the auto sync should work just fine. But let's just take a look here. Let's look at my finger on the controller and actually show it here just so you can see when I arm. And there we go, I armed. And that is 3.4 seconds. And we can see that the search size is 10 seconds. So we're gonna find the time when the uh, quad starts flying and the time and sync that up correctly. If you start the recording, set the quad down and walk away for a long time, you may wanna change this rough offset. Like in this case, I would set it to about three seconds. And let's see how auto sync works. Oh, this result looks really good. Look how close all those dots are to the line. That's amazing. Why is this better than the result from when I had a GoPro with built-in actual gyro data? And looking at this plot, they, like some of them are way noisier than others. Like right here, we had a lot of gyro movement, but overall the orange line pretty much looks like it's tracking close to the blue line. All of this looks pretty good. And if we look at the error here, the error is pretty low. And this is the part where you ask me like, what's a good error? What's a bad error? And I don't actually know. But those are pretty low numbers. Let's proceed. <laughs> For this one, let's play with that lock horizon stabilization. Uh, I will hit apply smoothness settings and then I am going to zoom. How much am I going to zoom? I kind of want to see it working. So I'm not going to zoom the, uh, I'm not going to zoom this border completely gone. And let's go ahead and play. Here we go. Yeah. That horizon is locked, baby. Here, let's zoom in just a little more. Oh, there we go. So you see, I can zoom in even further until those are completely gone. Although, depending on how the quadcopter moves, they may come into and out of frame. So I am going to want to play with this and find the ideal setting that gets rid of those uh, so that when I output the video, I get a good result. But there we go. We have horizon locked the DVR footage from the DJI Air Unit. Or DJI uh, goggles. I can see a little bit of jitter in there. I can kind of see it bobbling just a little bit. It's not perfect. It could be better. But it's way better than the alternative, which is nothing. Let's see what happens if I take this time constant up and like make it like uber smooth. Oh, there's a little jittering there. See that? Yeah, it's not perfect. What if I make it like really smooth? Oh, interesting. It's almost like when I made it uber smooth, now the jello has come in. If I dial this down, will the jello go away? Huh. Well, the last thing we need to do is export the data. Uh, so we're gonna go to the export tab. Uh, we can change the resolution if we want or just leave the video at the original resolution. Uh, as far as the output dimensions go, there is a trick here that you might wanna consider. And that is that, especially if you're not doing horizon lock, hang on, let me turn horizon lock off. Let's just do planes 3D smoothing. It's a great idea to export your footage in 169 aspect ratio and just take a 69 slice from the center here that's going to produce good results. So we let's just select a 720p resolution 1280 by 720 and then we can either choose to use adaptive zoom which will automatically zoom in and out to get rid of these black bars but some people don't like that changing zoom level especially when you do big moves uh, and it has to zoom way in, it can be a little distracting. So you can also manually set the FOV and you can see here the FOV scale down here is exactly the same as the smoothing window FOV here. We can set them to the same value. So if we've got a slider position here that works well for us to get rid of those black bars, then we can use that same, so 1.6. All right, so we'll set this to 1.6 as well. If we don't wanna use, oh, sorry, no, it's the zoom factor. 
So we can set that to 1.6 as well, and that will produce the exact same result as we're seeing here, or we can use adaptive zoom, which will just do it automatically. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can use NVENC. You can use your graphics card to encode it. LibX264 will use your processor to encode it. The encoder profile, doesn't, we don't, don't have to export audio. There's no audio here, and we can choose a bit rate. And for 720p, a bit rate of 20 megabits per second is more than sufficient. For 4K resolution, a bit rate of 75 megabits per second is great. 100 megabits per second is better. Uh, and more than 100 is probably wasted, um, especially if you're uploading to YouTube. You're going to want to up re render it like 4K and at a higher resolution. Then again, if you if your source footage is only 1080, you may there's not much point in rendering it 4K except that final step before you upload to YouTube. That's a topic for another video, I think. Um, okay, let's export stabilized video. Here we go. Before I sign off, there's a couple of the resources that you're going to want to be aware of if you found this video interesting. And the first one is the black box to GPMF project. Basically, what this lets you do is take black box data and put it into a video file so that you can use that file with Real Steady Go, or just so that it's stored in the file and you don't have to keep track of two separate files. Um, obviously, if you're watching this video, you probably aren't using Real Steady Go, but there may be scenarios where you want to blend that th that that third-party device gyro data with a video file and store them together, and this can do that. There's also a, a Discord server for this project where presumably you can get help if you've got questions, and I'll put a link to that down in the video description as always. Thank you so much to Elvin C for their work on the GyroFlow project. Although the results from GyroFlow are not always as good as the results from Real Steady Go. And um, they say that on their own website. They're like, maybe it's some self-effacing humor. They're like, yeah, it's crappy. It's worse than Real Steady Go. It's free and anybody can try it out and maybe you'll like the results and maybe you'll get good results from it. It's a really, really cool project. And it's always great when people work on open source projects like this to make this kind of stuff available to the average person. So big thanks to them. Hope this video has been helpful. Uh, there are more tutorials and so forth, such as that camera calibration thing that I didn't show you how to do. Yeah, I'll put links to Elvin C's videos and other references down in the video description. That's going to do it for this video, though. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, can I remind you I have a Patreon page. Uh, Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me. For as little as $2 a month, you just sign up and then uh, you pay me $2 or more. If you feel like I've earned it, it's totally up to you how much you choose. As a benefit, if you sign up on Patreon, you get access to my Discord server where you can chat with other uh, smart, fun, happy people, get help with your problems or just hang out. And you get access to podcast downloads of all of my live streams, which is something I put on the Patreon page. Just a few little benefits, but mostly you get to feel good about supporting the content that I make. And if you've watched all the way to the end of the video, then I guess you probably value that content. So at least give it a thought. If you're not convinced yet, keep watching videos. Maybe someday you will be. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.